tractor. Hello, my name's Rob. Welcome to the Daily Crawl here, guys. This is uh, the new build I've been working on. It's uh, got a long ways to go, but uh, it's coming around. I've uh, been building and building on this guy, man. Um, got a lot of great ideas for it. Anyways, this is my copper um, U-Rock chassis by Acres Engineering. Um, let's see here. This will be carbon fiber. I've got sheets of carbon fiber that I finally got in and I've been cutting my own panels, which um, you can see here, this panel will be um, on the inside. So you'll be able to see all the cross member bars. And then with a three dimensional look, I need to shrink this panel up just a tad, but it'll be um, extended out just a tad, you know, by a few millimeters or so. So there'll be a three dimensional side plate kind of thing going on. And what that will allow with the internal panel, it'll allow me to create drill holes in, in the internal panel for um, the link mounting options for both the rear and the front, just so I can, um, you know, give that angle a little bit. Although you don't really want that with the FCX 24 axles. I've got uh, brass portal boxes on the front. This is four wheel steer. I'm gonna go all plastic in the rear, but each axle weighs about the same just because they're both front axles. So I'm throwing brass onto the front one. But uh, the way the FCX is, is where the uh, drive shaft connects, since it's a ring and pinion and not the worm gear setup, it is lower. So the drive shaft is right there where it's gonna probably rub. And that's fairly normal in the RC world from what I understand is that your drive shafts will rub on the rocks a bit. Um, probably going to go steel drive shafts just because of that. I do have the hot racing overdrive transmission in here since I don't think they make an overdrive ring and pinion set. I still need to get the uh, metal gears from Trill for both the front and other front axle on the rear. Uh, battery tray will be resting on the rear links there. Um, I just... Uh, came up with an idea and so I bought the new RS40 and I should probably get it in the next couple weeks or whenever it shows up but um, this is a uh, Lizard Pro um, box you can buy from Shapeways and the RS40 is smaller than this box and I think I'm going to be able to attach the RS40 right here with the spool being on this side of it. And then I'll probably have to route it back through and then potentially um, up through, you know, the lid. Cause it'll be, this is just the side plate. I've got the actual piece floating around here. Anyways, I'll have a cutout for the pancake and then there'll be a tiny bit of the RS40 that protrudes out of the hood as well that I'll have to cut around. And that's fine. I'll have a cutout for this and a cutout for the RS40. And then the spool on this side, which I'll have a three servo rig on this tiny little acres chassis. Good thing I know how to solder and I'm not too bad at uh, wire management as well. All the wires are going to need trimmed up. So with that being said, I'm more than likely gonna have to go with the uh, GT5. I'm gonna have to give up my avatar setup for this loan rig and get a whole nother controller. So I got that going for me because FuraTech does not support um, three servos on their electronics, nor do they have a three position switch on their uh, controller to run a winch type servo so that's kind of sad disappointing but uh um i will um do a lizard ultimate like i put in my monster truck and uh which is under construction 
by the way. So the more jumps you go off, the more things get loose. And um, I caught it right away, I didn't strip any gears, but the actual motor mount separated from the transmission. Just enough wiggle, those gears are so tiny. Um, the motor did not wiggle away from the mount, it was the motor mount wiggling away from the transmission. So that little wiggle um, made it so the gears weren't catching as well. I caught it, haven't driven it in a little bit until I uh, re-Loctite all that down, but uh, I got about a couple dozen battery packs out of it before it needed uh, a tune-up, but that's what happens when your monster truck's flying through the air. Anyways, back to the acres just rambling here um what did i get at oh plastic i still got the plastic um stock undercarriage here the skid plate i'll probably dremel away that little bubble i've seen guys dremel that thing away but uh a three-dimensional side panel look went over that inner and outer panels carbon fiber i'll be hand cutting myself um, I've got these wheels right here to match. I think that'll look pretty sharp. I just ordered a set of Swamp Kings from LGRP. Probably go with the Flubber Stuffer route. Maybe, maybe not. Although, um, Hard Park just dropped their Super Wheels. But they're just in carbon fiber. That's cool. Although the only set that I'm willing to buy is the 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 holy set, and though it's it was either never filled or sold out in seconds after he put it on. Cause gosh, I've been on his website all day today. It's Saturday, and I watched him upload all the items onto his website. And then the wheels that I was going to buy seemed to be the only ones that were either A, never uploaded and still say sold out or that he only had a few and they sold out super fast. I don't know what, but uh, there is one other set of them super wheels that I am interested in, but uh, I'd rather wait to get the ones I want. You know, if you're going to spend 60 bucks on a set of 3D printed internal wheels with a carbon fiber plate. Uh, you know, that's a lot of money for 3D printed stuff. I'm not saying it's not quality, but just, you know, I also want his transmission. So I'd rather spend the $60 on the transmission. Um, I've been waiting 76 days. Sad. I check his website every day for it. I'm obsessed with getting that transmission. I can remember the moment I did not hit buy on it for whatever reason. And then an hour later, went to buy it, and it was gone. And I've hated myself for not just buying it. <laughs> I'm sure we can all say that about certain things in this hobby as they watch them go away. But anyways, I'm sure it'll be available one day soon, and I hope so, because I would definitely buy it. But uh, that, will, that transmission will go in something different, not this Acres. This one's already well underway to being a pretty sweet build and if i am able to do a three servo with this it'll be an acres like none other and it will guys remember smaller than this by a bunch of millimeters so the ride height will be very similar to um the height of the motor of how much the motor sticks up because part of the servo will end up on the other side of this plate here, and it's smaller. It might even tuck underneath there. So if anybody's got an acres, I mean, you can pretty well cut your own carbon fiber plate and stick the new RS40 right there in front with the spool. Um, I've already set it all up. There will be room for the spool at full compression with the links and everything that it's not going to get in the way. It's just... I'm really excited to get them. I'm really excited to get this thing together. Um, taking a trip to California here in the next month or so. So uh, actually here in like 30 days. So I'm, I'm really hoping I can get this thing wrapped up and I can take this thing down to California. 
and crawl at uh, Columbia Park there, was outside of uh, Hollywood and whatnot. My nasty car, look and, mine. Uh, and meet up with my brother-in-law, who uh, is building one-tenth crawlers now. They came, visited uh, me and the family. Actually, one of our cousins got married, and my brother-in-law drove my uh, scythe like all day. And then now he's uh, building crawlers. My sister's just uh, <laughs> loving it now. She's like, thanks Rob, this is my life. I thought that was kind of hilarious. Anyways, um, this is it guys. I've still got the little sticker to pull off of that and that, but it's gonna be rad. So um, I'm on top of it. Just thought I'd give an update, but uh, Oh yeah, and so uh, the battery will fit right on that plate. And then the little bit at full compression fits just perfectly right through the gap of this bar and the incandescent. So at full compression, it doesn't touch anything. I mean, there's just millimeters of tolerance here. Like you gotta be spot on with everything. And uh, I'll be able to fit all the electronics and everything in here and it'll just be a rolling masterpiece by the time this is all said and done at least that's the plan um the holes that i did add in this chassis i drilled this one i drilled this one i drilled this one i drilled this one and i drilled this one and um i might end up having to drill another one between here and here but on this plane of this one anyways probably have one more hole to drill but that's it. See the update. Um, peace till the next time.